Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back to the Electronic Spring League of Legends tournament. This is the grand finals between the Fappy Birds and CSU Long Beach's super team. We saw game number one go over to the super team, and now game number two go over to the Fappy Birds, meaning that we are now effectively in a best of three. It's going to take two more wins to secure the rest of this tournament, and we'll have to see if these guys can bring it out. My name's Caster Seda. And I'm joined once again by Utsicle. And let's take a look at some of these early bands coming out on the board for these teams. Yeah, uh, I'm super excited. This basically means we're going to go to at least four games now uh, is the bare minimum that we can get out of the five. So I'm excited for this. Uh, the Cinder Band comes out from the Fappy Birds and LeBlanc from the CSULB Super Team. I'm really expecting 
I was kind of a little bit expecting a Morgana ban just because both teams that have had got they've both been kind of going back and forth with Morgana and each team that's had Morgana has won and that was a seriously impressive Morgana uh, last game so we actually get a Master Yi again which makes sense they do not want to give that over to the uh, super team yeah we see the exact same bands coming out from the Fappy Birds that Syndra, Master Yi and Rise will see probably see Justin Kimchi again going for the Ari in the mid lane. It did a decent job and was able to single-handedly 1v4 stall out a Baron and a Baron, a Dragon, and secure two kills. So he's got the skills to get the kills. Question is, does the rest of his team have the capability to follow up now? Exactly like you mentioned, Queen of Clubs insta-locking in that Morgana. That's been a very important pick for these two teams. 100% play rate in our two matches so far. And I... Honestly, the plays have been fantastic. Tekshi, he can find the dark banding, bind dark bandings. Please, no Fiderino. He could do the exact same thing on the same champion. Last game, we saw him on someone like Karma, where very, very heavy harass. Did a good job of bullying out Queen of Clubs, but just wasn't terribly effective in the late game for the super team. I'm curious if he's going to go back for that Karma once again and try to beat out Tekshi and Ten of Clubs a second time around, or if he's got something else up his sleeve. Yeah, well, they did get that initial double kill. It's just once they returned to lane and things kind of um, started to, uh, you know, um, even out between them, they weren't able to get the better of some of those trades. Uh, they had a few ganks go awry, uh, things like that. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm interested to see kind of what we have come out of the jungle again. I'm surprised to see the super team hovering over Nocturne again. I don't think it did what they had wanted it to do. Oh wow, they end up taking the Aurelia away from the Fappy Birds, so hopefully Nestle has some practice on that and they're not just taking it to get it away from Queen of Clubs because Queen of Clubs played a spectacular Aurelia that escaped top lane last game. Uh, lots of plays, really, really aggressive with it as well. So if Nestle can't maybe match that same aggression, it might end up being a flop for them, but we'll see. They lock in the Nocturne and the Aurelia and uh, back, back to Fappy Birds now. Yeah, and we are all the way back over to the super team. Liger Zero is going to be taking that jungle Shivana again. It did have a little bit of difficulty early game against Derpin's Nocturne with the crazy invades, but now they're going to see that coming. They're hopefully going to be able to collapse on him in time to deny that. And it, I'm very intrigued by the Irelia pickup from Nestle. It's exactly as you mentioned. Hopefully he does have some comfort on the champion because it's now Queen of Clubs opportunity to pick anything to deal with that Irelia. Right now, he's looking at the Jax from Tekshi. I certainly hope that it is going to be the Jax. The Grand Duelist is an amazing fighter and one of the few people who can keep up with Irelia once she completes that Triforce. So we'll have to keep an eye on the early game for the laning phase to see who ends up taking an early advantage. Now, in the bottom lane, Fidorino is going to be taking Thresh this time around. Yeah, definitely. Thresh and Jinx, too, in the bottom lane. Um, Thresh... I'm surprised we haven't seen it touch so far in this best of five. Like I said, both these teams really favoring that Morgana. Uh, and the Karma was the attempt last game to kind of combat that Morgana. But it didn't work out for them. Um, Fappy Birds uh, secures the Morgana for a second game in a row. And uh, the Super Team's going to try out Thresh. Thresh is a great support. Tons of utility. We talked about it the other night. Um, he's got his hook. He's got the lantern. He's got play he's got the box for team fights just all kinds of uh, amazing across the board now with jinx i'm interested in that because jinx is a little bit more late game uh mid to late game you know when she starts to ramp up and thresh wants to get a lot done early in the lane so we'll see how that goes but his lantern does counter the lack of kind of uh, mobility and escape that jinx uh, doesn't have so uh, on the opposite side of things we're gonna see the fappy birds locking in the soraka and i'm that's going to be a mid Soraka, which I don't think we've seen in the tournament so far. Uh, but that's personally on the top of my annoying solo queue list right now. Absolutely. It, yeah, it's super strong. Yeah, Cloud9 brought back that mid lane Soraka, I think, two weeks ago when they played up against... Um, I think first it was Team Coast, where they absolutely dominated, and then switched it out for a few more games in the Super Week, and then brought it back against TSM, who did not see it coming. They thought it was a troll pick, but it ended up being 
a very crazy powerful pick. So the link going to be taking that mid lane Soraka against Justin Kimchi on Orianna. Now we've seen Justin Kimchi on Assassins. We've seen him on Ziggs. This is the first time we're seeing him on a bit slower, more of a sustained AP carry. Hopefully he's going to be comfortable on it as we're seeing four unique new champions coming out for CSU Super Team. That's Irelia on Nestle. Kimchi going to be taking the Orianna. Songs rocking that Jinx and Fiorino on Thresh. And you mentioned that Jinx and Thresh have got some pretty good synergy, but they're going to be up against the exact same lane they were last time. Ten of Clubs getting Graves once again. Last game he was 6-1-7. and seven. And Tekshi on that Morgana. Yeah, and you know, all these players, uh, they're all, uh, a majority of them are in Diamond, they play solo queue a lot, they know kind of what's going around, um, maybe they haven't played as much this week because of the tournament, but, uh, you know, I really like this Morgana and Graves bot lane, like I said, that if you land a Dark Bind, you can get a lot of, Q, uh, a lot of damage with that Buckshot follow-up from Graves, so... I don't see the early game going well for the Thresh and the Jinx lane, but maybe they get a good gank from Nocturne at level 6. Um, maybe, you know, they get a good Dragon situation. Maybe Jinx can pick up a few kills. But I'm looking for Jinx to be more effective towards the late game for them, which is really when these games have been ramping up. It's been really close in this mid-game area, and then it'll just be that one team fight around, you know, 27 to 29 minutes, and that's when things start to turn around in the first two games. So, uh... That being said, looking at a later game, you know, Jax on the other side of things can do a lot of damage late, especially if you give him the space to farm. He does have that teleport, which is interesting. Um, you know, they want to continue with uh, what they've been doing in the past games, which is having their top laner come down and join them for these dragon fights. Aurelia took it this time as well, so they both have the capability um, with a stun. Aurelia is a little bit less uh, effective than Jax is because the enemy has to be higher health than them, but they can both stop these... Uh, effectively stop these teleports too so uh it could be interesting kind of like a who teleports first situation uh up in that top line. yeah we'll have to keep an eye on how those fights play out exactly of course a lot of that's going to come down to and who is bullying out whom or whom is bullying out who i don't know grammar is weird but if queen of clubs can keep irelia locked down under the turret then he is going to be feeling pretty fantastic he can leap strike away and then back further into a bush before using teleport to get into the fight whereas nestle if he's under the turret we could see the dive from queen of clubs to get the quick counter strike stun and then walk away um just completely grinning as there is not going to be any sort of follow-up from nestle on the other hand if irelia is able to bully out jackson it's the exact same scenario just with the names in different positions, Irelia bullying Jax and so on. It's going to come down a lot to the ganks from Derpin and Liger Zeros. We've seen Liger Zeros denied and still able to come back into the mid and late game by just farming out in his jungle and getting really consistent games. Now Derpin, he seems to be really favoring that super aggressive Wriggles rush for the early Feral Flare, and that can kind of hurt his early game ganks a bit. Nocturne normally doesn't have too powerful ganks pre-6 because it's kind of hard to get in the melee range for the Unspeakable Horror, but if he does spend a little bit more time ganking, that could be an entirely different paced game from the Super Team. They've got a pretty powerful early game team fight if they want to push it. Yeah, most definitely. So, I mean, it could be interesting. Maybe they decide, hey, we want to, you know, go towards the early game right now. Maybe he goes away from the Feral Flare. But I see him building it again just because Nocturne and Shivana and, you know, Yi we already mentioned and Xin Zhao and some of these other champions. The reason they're getting played right now, as much as they are, is because of the Feral Flare. It allows them to put out a lot more damage, allows them to clear a lot quicker, allows them to, you know, get these Barons down super quick, like we saw in Game 1 on that Yi. Um, and actually right now as well, which we haven't seen anybody do yet, but you can actually pick up the Spirit Orb as well, and both of the um, passives are separate. They don't actually overlap, so you can get the mana and health back and the extra damage from both, which is how we've seen some people even in solo queue soloing Baron which is a little bit insane. I don't expect to see that in this game. But uh, that being said, we are loading in. So let's go over these uh, team compositions. Yeah, in the top lane, we're going to see Queen of Clubs tanking that Angler Jax in the jungle. Once again, Liger Zeros rocking that Dragon Shivana. In the mid lane, the Link taking heal on a Soraka. And in the bottom lane, once again, we're going to see Tekshi and Ten of Clubs on that Graves Morgana combination. That's going to round out the picks for the Fappy Birds. Super Team, on the other hand, they're looking a bit imposing themselves. 
Yeah, so for the super team, we have Nestle on Aurelia in the top lane. Love that Frostblade Aurelia skin. Uh, Durpin in the jungle going on that Eternal Nocturne for the second game in a row. We'll see how effective he can be this time around. Justin Kimchi, this is his first game on Orianna in this tournament. Uh, we'll see if he's able to be as effective. He's been playing a lot of roaming champions. Uh, and Orianna still pretty good at the roam. But again, like you said, a little bit slower ramp up than what we've seen him on. Uh, songs on that Jinx. And we also have... Have, please know Fidorino on the Thresh support in the bottom lane. So, uh, really awesome lineups. I'm excited to get into this uh, third game. And we have now loaded into the Rift already. Taking a look at the first item pickups, a little bit of differentiation from the Irelia this time around. Again, that's Nestle going to be taking the Irelia instead of Queen of Clubs. This time, he's going to be going for the early Crystalline Flask. That's going to give a lot of fantastic sustain to him. And really quick, we see a fast group coming out from the super team looks like they are going to be making a beeline towards that bottom lane to try to catch someone out of position though it is going to be 10 of clubs on his own down there Tekshi spawning out the red buff defensive lineup should be able to keep an eye on this unless they are unprepared though again it's game number three they're warmed up they're at the prime of their play time one and one this is a lot on the line for these guys and again, we'll have to see if this gank is successful. It was unsuccessful last time. Tekshi walks too far forward. Dustbringer finds him instantly, flashes. The zap comes out. It's not going to find him. And a quick, quick advantage coming out for the super team by burning that flash. Yeah, uh, I, it's really unfortunate there, Super Team. If Thresh had been down there with them, they would have had a shot at that. Morgana put herself out there, and you could have had a Thresh hook connect. Would have been great, but the rest of the team didn't have any hard CC to launch in there at level 1, so they weren't able to secure it. Like you said, they get the Flash, which will give them uh, a bit of an advantage in that bottom lead, which is in that bottom lane, which is something that they need, considering, like we said, the Graves Morgana is going to be a lot stronger early than the Thresh Jinx. So, and any kind of advantage you can get is great, but wow, imagine if that Thresh had been there with them on time. Yeah, please know Fidorino, on, when he loaded into the game, he actually purchased the recommended item, Adorian Shield and Health Pots, refunded them, and then switched it into a Ruby Crystal. And the time it took for him to do that, he ended up about maybe 1,000, 1,500 units behind his team, and that alone was enough to allow Tekshi to escape with his life. And we are seeing Quick Jax actually camping in the jungle, spotting out the red buff. He's going to be spotted by Please No Fidorino. This is interesting. We're seeing a lane swap from Fidorino and Jinx. It's instantly spotted out by Queen of Clubs. Death Sentence finds him. Orianna collapsing. He's got his flash as well. Rocking that early Counter-Strike means he doesn't have the Leap Strike. But Link, he's waiting over the wall. Not sure if he wants to go for the heal. Irelia coming in for a bit of a gank as well. This looks like we could see a quick A-Ram as everybody is rushing down into the mid lane. But Fidorino and Song's going to head their way on up to the top. And in the bottom, it's just going to be 10 of Clubs and Tekshi taking a super early advantage. I'm really confused by Nestle right now. What is he doing? Um, well, this is something we've been seeing a lot in the pro scene right now, which is these kind of lane swaps, and then you have your jungler grab uh, one or both of his buffs, and then they meet you in the lane, and they do a quick push, sometimes with three and sometimes with four people even, and you'll see them get up to uh, up to even the inhibitor tower in some of the OGN games I've seen. So we'll see what happens here. It looks like Jax is going to join them, and so is Shivana. It looks like they are going for this four-man push, and if Aurelia sticks around, she's going to die. Absolutely, that dive potential is enormous. We can see she is just sitting under the turret trying to wait it out. I don't know that she can even farm out this, and there she goes, backing away. She's going to head her way over to the white and the wolf camp. However, Derpin, with a fast reaction, headed up towards that top lane. He's not going to make it in time to be able to defend it, as we do have Jinx and defend it. He wants to attack it. I don't know if he's going to be able to bring it down. It is getting low with the mini wave, but they don't have enough quite yet. The next wave now streaming in. It's at half health, continuing to go low. They're getting close. Question is, do they have the damage to burn it through? In the meanwhile, the four-man push continues in the bottom lane. They're now looking for the tier two turret. And with Liger Zeros and Queen of Clubs continue to push out, they could very well get it as the caster minis are there. It's now tier one for tier one. This is just such an interesting start from these teams. Yeah, and the real issue here is that the super team did not react to it from the start. When this happens in the competitive scene, you usually see three and three or four and four, whatever it is. But now it's become a game of chicken. 
And as you can see, they're only going to get the first tower in the top lane before they have to back to defend this inhib. Because if they didn't come back and play chicken, as I just mentioned, they would possibly lose that inhibitor turret and an inhibitor. And then you have super minions only, you know, five, six minutes into the game. So that's not what they wanted. You end up having them back and uh, Fappy Birds comes out on top with that trade. They get two towers for one. Yeah, and now that we do finally have the lane swap, Jinx headed down towards that bottom. Actually, she's going to be roaming back into the mid. I think she needs to make up her mind and go join up with her support. And we could very well see them move up in the mid lane. This is some really wonky play coming out. Currently, I'm going to have to say the advantage goes over towards the Fabby Birds. They are two turrets to one. They've already taken more turrets in five minutes than we saw Farmers Fighting do over an entire 37 minute game. So really solid play coming out from Fappy Birds. They, apparently they've got the uh, communication as well. We were lauding Super Team earlier, but Fappy Birds, they're bringing it back too. Yeah, and I will say this for the CSULB Super Team, as far as how quickly they reacted, it did take the Fappy Birds a while to get their um, their top laner and their jungler down into that bottom lane. The push had been going for a little while. Aurelia used her TP to get into that lane onto the tower, and right after she did, the two members showed up. So at that point, it was kind of too late for her to do the same thing. Um, but interestingly enough here, you have Fappy Birds now doing a three-man push on mid, uh, it is getting replied to now. You're going to have three on three in the mid lane, but it looked like they wanted to try to push down this mid tower uh, before the CSULB super team could react. Now, the real benefit coming out for the super team is going to be Nocturne. He's been farming in the jungle this entire time. Yes, he took the tier one turret, but not spending that time in the bottom lane trying to help out Irelia is putting him up eight CS in farm. He does have a pretty decent amount of gold, was collapsed onto the mid, but was spotted out by a ward. This time, he's going to be smart enough to check into that bush by the Dragon Pit, finally clearing it out. I remember in the first and second game, that lasted an incredibly long time for the Fappy Bird, so already that advantage being taken. It is currently about an 800 gold lead in favor of the Fappy Birds. Looks like they are going to rotate into a little bit more of a standard position, sending Morgana and Graves from the bottom, but now the three-man push picks up or the super team in mid lane. Yeah, and it's really interesting because as you can see here, Jax's wasn't pushed up both towers, but Jax has actually frozen his lane on his side of the river so that he can farm it. What Aurelia did here was she pushed it up, and that's allowed Graves to go back down bottom into this kind of standard play, as you mentioned, and continue to farm, whereas he had gone to the mid lane, I think expecting the lane to have been frozen and not allowed him to farm there. So. Um, Aurelia now moving up towards mid lane, but it really looks like this, uh, this four-man push bottom and this kind of The death sentence finds Liger zeroes. Aurelia dives in. Peter Reno is low. Nestle already level six, tossing out a little bit of poke with those transcendent blades, but is not going to be able to find the kills. Nocturne was also waiting in the wings. He doesn't have any major items just yet, but he doesn't need them as Shivana locked down in that mid lane means he can steal the blue buff. The link gets pulled out. His level six does have the wish. He's going to drop that any second now he all has used his heal and ten of clubs he's got his heal as well but he's split pushing in the bottom lane we could see a quick collapse come out from the super team if they're looking for it but derpit with the successful blue steel that is going to bring him to level six and continue to keep him very powerful over liger zeros yeah again like i was trying to mention it's just that this initial swap really has kind of put a tilt i think on the CSULB super team that push mid was good for them they didn't actually end up getting anything out of it except for a lot of aggression they did get the blue steel but again Jax has just been continuing to farm he's now 13 cs up over the aurelia and like we said going into the late game Jax is going to scale a lot more effectively than this aurelia is so i think again that this swap regardless of the blue steel regardless of the mid aggression this has really come out on top for the fappy birds if you look at even uh the mid and the bottom lane cs they're also ahead in and it is now nine minutes in a quick thousand and a half gold lead in favor of the fappy birds that powerful rotation looking to be followed up with yet another rotation in that top lane as we've got morgana grouping up with soraka and Jax. morgana or, or soraka excuse me the link going to be collapsing for a bit of proxy to deny the farms hopefully Jax has got the damage he is level seven but teleport coming in let's see if they go for the dive on the nestle counter strike goes down he instantly flashes he looks like he's going to be dived towards the enemy turret turns transcendent blaze onto link takes a quick stun for it but looks like he doesn't have anywhere to go let's see if he gets the juke once again already that turret has fallen dark finding finds him this is going to be nextly going down to queen of uh, queen of clubs 
That's going to be first blood. Put in the quick 4,000 gold at the 9 minute mark. And now, this is not looking too good for the super team. They're collapsing onto the mid turret, but I think 10 of clubs has got the wave clear. Yeah, this is super impressive from Fappy Birds. I'm, I'm, I'm like really excited about this. I'm not a huge fan of how this meta, how this, uh, how this kind of meta has developed in the LCS, but it's exciting to see because it's something that Fappy Birds has obviously practiced because they were ready for it. It's not just something they decided as they came into the game. Like, oh yeah, maybe we should do this. They were practiced. They were ready. They're gonna lose out on the dragon here, but they could possibly get a second turret in the top lane if nobody reacts to this. Aurelia can't defend that alone. Yeah, and I really, she's making her way back up there. Again, the three members are capable of diving her. She has added a phage to her repertoire, but it might not be enough. It's Queen of Clubs, he's going to town, still rocking those double Dorians for enormous damage with the empowered strikes. He's really bringing it down quick. Transcendent Blades to clear out a few minions is going to remove all of them, but Queen of Clubs has got the damage to bring down the turret. It's four turrets to one. The only remaining turrets for the super team are going to be in that mid lane. Kimchi getting a bit distracted there, allows Liger Zeros to walk up onto him. He drops the heal to get some movement speed, but Burnout keeps Liger Zeros caught up. Flash from Kimchi makes it under the turret, but the red buff takes down. He dies. It's two kills, four turrets. They don't have the dragon, but they certainly have the objective control. Yeah, they have their own dragon, Liger Zero, taking care of business there in that mid lane. Uh, again, I'm just super impressed with this strategy because this is something that has been happening a lot in the LCS and the Challenger scene, the competitive scene, and it's it's great to see it come out uh, here. I mean, again, it's not the most fun to maybe watch from a spectator point of view, but I'm really excited about it. Obviously, CSULB was not prepared for it. Um, they will be uh, next game, regardless of who ends up winning this. But I mean, it's still very early. But I mean, you look at it, you've got about a 3.2k gold lead, maybe 3.4k gold lead. Paranoia goes down in the bottom lane. Derpit is looking for the kill on 10 of clubs. Super Mega Death Mark comes across the map, but it is not enough as 10 of clubs with the early BF sword is able to out damage that Wriggles on Nocturne. Picks up a kill for free. The miscommunication from Super Team costing them their life and a few turrets at that. That's gonna actually give the early Bloodthirster over to Graves. It's 11 and a half minutes in with a Bloodthirster stacking over Songs. Songs does not have even the Vampiric Scepter, which means that this is gonna be a very scary Graves indeed. And just the play coming out from the Fappy Birds is incredible. They are yeah. getting powerful rotations. They're keeping pressure up in the right places and they're finding pick after pick onto uh, the super team. Now, Nestle, he found Tekshi clearing out his word. He can't even contest that word clear from Tekshi. A level five Morgana versus a level eight Irelia. That does not bode well for the super team. Not at all. And look at this. Fappy Birds uh, grouping up at the mid turret. Really low. They kind of want to take it out. Super team tries to engage on them and they don't get anything out of it. They're going to sit here and they're going to defend it. But I think as far as who's going to come out on top of this, you have Irelia in this mid lane trying to help them defend. And likewise, you have the Jack sitting up in top lane continuing to farm. So um, that CS is actually kind of evened out. Aurelia was able to find some in other lanes, but uh, Jack's still farming. You have the jungle very close in CS. Mid farm is pretty close as well, although the bot lane that uh, Graves is still up by 20 CS. He's still holding that CS lead that he got early game. And again, looking at the gold, you have uh, a four, almost a 4K gold lead here at 13 minutes. So this is really impressive. Absolutely, we see Fiderino clearing out a few wards of his own to keep up with Liger Zeros. He does have that early ancient coin, but unfortunately that's not going to provide too much gold if you don't get a standard laning phase. On the other hand, the Spell Thief's Edge, that is going to continue to provide gold over to Tekshi because he just has to hit enemy champions in order to get that bonus gold. And he's going for some pretty early forward warding into the super team's jungle he's going to be spotted out here by Fiderino and derpent but he doesn't have to get those wards down he just has to put presence put pressure onto the super teams to keep them feeling behind it's really a game of morale at this point fappy birds they're feeling strong they've taken four turrets they're three kills to zero super team they can't be feeling too great and with nestle getting caught out in his own jungle here this could be even more demoralizing as he's being jumped upon and he's gonna go down derpin is sitting in the jungle he is gonna be spotted out once again by that dragon no follow-up means he's gonna get away with his life but the four-man rotation again from the fappy birds 
Yeah, and if they want to, they could even continue to push this top. I think that they're actually going to rotate middle here and uh, try to get this mid tower down. Dang, look at the damage! Ten of clubs going to town there. That early bloodthirster, is he already fully stacked on that? He's currently sitting at 23 stacks. So, really solid play. Super Mega Death Market is going to miss. Dark Binding finds Feederino. He drops the box to try to make it out of there. It is going to stall out the Fappy Birds, but I don't think they're going to be too perturbed as they're looking to secure the last Tier 2 turret 14 and a half minutes in. Yeah, they're now 5,000 gold up. They're going to push this last inner turret, like you said, to go up to six turrets now. Uh, Jinx did get that turret bottom. She's going to try to continue to push, but Soraka is reacting to it, so she's not going to get anything out of it. And that's going to be Soraka with the completed Athens on Holy Grail. Fiderino going deep onto the enemy team. Doesn't have the Talisman of the Ascension, but I don't know that's the fight that he wanted as Irelia splitting in the top lane, Jinx in the bottom. And yes, Derpin is doing a good job on that Nocturne, but he's only at 22 stacks for that Riggle's Lantern. He needs to get at least three more jungle camps before he can effectively start trying to eliminate targets on the enemy team. He's going for that Assassin build once again. I don't know if I agree with it this time around, but oh man, Songs caught up by Tekshi, Link, and Ten of Clubs. Dark Finding finds him. Dark Passage is not going to be effective when you're snared in position. In the meanwhile, Queen of Clubs actually forcing the Flash. He's going now on to Kimchi using that Phage and the Grandmaster's fight. Flash is under to try to get it down. It's 1v3. Miracle comes across the map. Shockwave is dodged. Queen of Clubs getting one kill, looking for two. He's going on to Nestle. Does he have enough to make it three? Counter-Strike dodging the auto attacks. He's going to lock it down. Dark Passage allows Nestle to survive that last hit, but here's a Dragon Flame in midair. Keeps him away from the team. But it doesn't matter. That is the only kill for the super team. And the inhibitor itself is being pressured by the Fappy Birds. Yeah, this is just, again, this is well uh, well thought out and well played by the Fappy Birds. And just CSULB is reacting to it now, but it's too little too late. They weren't prepared for it. Took him by surprise, and now look at this. You have a naked in him bottom. You're up eight to one kills, seven to two in turrets, twenty-eight thousand gold to tw almost twenty-one thousand gold. So you're up about seven point five k right now, and now they're gonna go secure the second dragon of the game. So, uh, just you know, Fappy Birds is just ahead every step of the game right now on CSULB Super Team. It's unfortunate. Maybe they weren't prepared for it. Now that they you know see what's going on and they've reacted to it, like I said, it's just too little, too late. They can't. I mean, you just had uh, Queen of Clubs on this. Jax, who's actually behind in CS, almost 1v3 the enemy team, so... Absolutely. Queen of Clubs just demonstrating why Jax is called the Grand Duelist, as he... <laughs> that wasn't even a duel, that was a, a miniature team fight. Jax is powerful enough to beat his own team against the super team. At this point, it's almost worth the time to start thinking ahead to the next match. What do we ban? What do we try to keep away from the Fappy Birds? We cannot allow this to happen once again. I look like they're gonna be a dive onto Link. He does heal himself to get that bonus armor, so gonna walk away with his life, but it's, it's too little, too late at this point. The super team, they've got good rotations. They're all grouped up now. Songs, he's actually joining the rest of his team. Ten of clubs forced to drop the flash, but no follow-up means he's going to walk away with his life. Another heal keeps him at even more health. The box is used. Looks like Lagner Zeros is starting a fight. Queen of clubs has teleported in, so he's looking to start that team fight once again. Looks like the super team is going to back away with their life, but... Again, it's too little, too late. A 9,000 gold lead in favor of the Fappy Birds. And with all of Super Team forced to back up and defend their base, we could see a collapse onto the Baron. Yeah, definitely could see a Baron here um, with Jax and Graves as far ahead as they are and the Riggle's Lantern on this Shyvana could easily see them taking down this Baron. And if CSULB Super Team comes out to, you know, fight it, I, I, I don't know if that's good for them. This is already down to almost half health. They're not going to be able to get here in time. The rocket flies in, but... This is just like we were just mentioning about the game so far. This is too little too late. The oh, teleport coming he's in. gonna spot it out. Let's see if Irelia is going to try to go for the steal. She goes in, but the rest of her team isn't there to follow up. Shockwave finds only Tekshi. Irelia follows Dark Finding, finds Kimchi. Looks like Queen of Clubs isn't quite finding the leap strike, but it doesn't matter as Liger Zeros flashes the wall to secure that kill. And with the top lane and AP carry dead, this does mean that we could see a quick another inhibitor go down as Derpin. He's being engaged. Bomb drops the heal, drops the paranoia as well. The dash into the enemy backline, but the link secures that kill with a magic banana. And this could very well be the end of the game as the Fappy Birds, they are just putting so much pressure onto the super team.
Yeah, if the super team decides to stay in it here um, and try to continue to defend, you have to remember the death timers are not that long. I don't think that the Fappy Birds will be able to finish this off right here, but they can easily get one inhibitor, possibly two, and regardless, I think they can just back out, take the gold that they have, and then come back with the Baron buff and do it all over again. Uh, this is just oh, man. Tekshi with the four-man soul shackles. He doesn't have the Zonius, which means he doesn't get the second proc, but he already has secured two kills with Fiend of Clubs and 10 of Clubs. They're going to be able to pick those up. They're going to have to be forced to back out now as we do have Jinx on the respawn. Derpin looking to secure something, anything, but he's not going to find it. Quick command dissonance, slowing 10 of Clubs, but here's Liger Zero is coming in with the flank. Derpin getting a quick unspeakable horror onto Link, but he's separated from his team, looking like he's just trying to pull them apart. Queen of Clubs is going to town onto Orion and the meanwhile he's looking for another kill finds it and is going to finally end up securing that inhibitor while Nocturne is continuing to retreat away from that Shivana. he's gonna get away with his life but at the cost of his team members and inhibitor Queen of Clubs is actually waiting on the other side of the inhibitor that is so scary when you're running to the Nexus and there's a Jax between you and the fountain he's going 1v everybody right now and he just might be able to do it as another inhibitor falls he's running distraction mode let's see if Fiderino he needs a single auto attack Attack is secured. He does finally get the kill. Command Shockwave whizzes, whips, and the death sentence going to find Link. Pulls him back in. Dragon's Rage engages the team fight once again. Feeder Reno block low. The wish keeps him up. Nestle going to fall. This is so crazy. It's just skirmish after skirmish. Yeah, I mean, at this point in the game, there's really not a whole lot CSULV Super Team can do. They're down by 14,000 gold, almost 15,000 now. Uh, am I doing my math right? Yeah, I am. Okay, so yeah, GG. They call the GG and get the surrender out of the CSULV Super Wow, amazing from the Fappy Birds. I'm super impressed by it just because we've seen a lot of interesting strategies so far. But, you know, this is one of those, like, this is what they're doing at the top of the game right now. This is how they're kind of, this is how the meta is developing in the uh, in the LCS, in the OGN. This is what people are doing, and it's great to see this out of, you know, a lower possibly, like, challenger, like, level kind of team. It's, it's, I don't know. It's, again, I can understand from a spectator's point of view, maybe not the most exciting thing to watch, but... That's really exciting. That's really high level play from them. The the team the the team synergy, the team control, the rotations for all the towers, everything was on point. I mean seventeen to three here and I mean two of those deaths of the three that you know, those were on Jax and that was when he was one V three people. So very solid play from the Fappy Birds indeed. We just saw an amazing game from the Fappy Birds taking game number three off of CSU Super Team with game number one going to the Super Team number two going to the Fappy Birds. That brings them to a two to one advantage. If they are going to take game number four, they will win the series. Question is, they will have to go over the Super Team. Will they have anything to say about that game number four? We'll find out in just a minute. Be sure to stay tuned while we get the lobby set up for the next set of games. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I have been and always will be Caster Seda. You can follow me on Twitter at Caster Seda. My casting partner has been Oodsicle. You can follow him on Twitter at Oodsicle as well. We'll be right back with Erectronic Spring League of Legends 2014 tournament in just a second.